name and all God's people said, amen, amen. High five, five more people before you take your seat. Welcome them to church. And if you have a Bible, you can turn to John 14. If you have an orange Bible, you can turn to September 14th as we prepare to study God's word. My goodness, what a, what a time. So grateful and welcome to church. Uh, we haven't met, I'm Todd, one of the pastors here, and uh, really grateful that you've made it to church. Where's my first time guest, by the way? Again, I know you guys are first time. Anybody else wave at me? First timers right over here. Come on, over here. I love it. Thank you guys for being with us. Uh, Pastor Cab, you want to do me a favor real quick? How many, you're a first time guest and you act, you actually like Texas Roadhouse? Anybody? All right, you got it. You got, yeah, yeah, that went up real quick. There, that went up real quick. All right, what's your name, ma'am? What's your name? Crystal, everybody say, what's up, Crystal? Thanks, thanks for making it. Um, I have a mandate with a guy. One time a month, we go to Texas Roadhouse we get filet, eight, eight ounce, medium, salad with ranch on the side, and uh, mashed potatoes and brown gravy. So that's just, that's an option there <laughs> every, every month. And uh, now one of my, one of my good friends uh, lost his wife to cancer several years ago. And from that point, once a month, we just go and we just hang out and pray for one another and catch up over some steaks and so. Uh, we just wanted to extend a, a heart of gratitude that you're here. You can be anywhere, so take that, get whatever you want on God, amen. So grateful to be with you guys. I wanted to give a quick um, word. It's a, it's a pretty fun weekend, man. Um, the Orange weekend, the Orange Bible, I'm gonna get to that in a minute. Hallelujah night tonight. How many are gonna be out of Hallelujah night? Let's go. And. Um, and some of you, uh, whether you know it or not, we have an election coming up. And so many people have wanted to ask me as your, your lead pastor, what's our heart when it comes to election? And so I just wanted to share with you real briefly. Uh, so there's clarity and I'll look into the camera as well. All of our friends joining online all over the world. And uh, as I was praying about this, there were really three words that came to mind. Number one, prepared. Everybody say prepared. Um, I would just, tell you, we have a great nation where we can actually choose to make our voice known. And so what I would challenge you to do is, A, if you're thinking about sitting on the sidelines because there's no candidate that's perfectly aligned with, with what you want. By the way, that's Jesus. And last I checked, uh, I don't know if he's on the ballot. Okay, so, but what I would just say is, number one, be prepared. Do your research and then get active and make your voice known, okay? Uh, I, there's a, a voter's guide that I went through. I'm already ready. I have everything all ready. So when I go to cast my ballot, I'm prepared, okay? So prepared, number one. Number two, everybody say biblical. So listen, uh, here's what I'm, there's no perfect candidate. There's gonna be some issues on the ballot. Um, what I would say is I'm gonna challenge you and me, use the Bible as your grid when you're making these prepared decisions on who to vote for and what to vote for. I'm gonna tell you, man, like this is our playbook of life. That's why we challenge everyone to read through the Bible one day at a time. So you have a deep understanding of God's heart. And now with that base, you can go actively vote, amen. And then finally, number three, humble. Everybody say humble. One thing that I'm lovingly requesting all love churchers, Please, fine, have a strong conviction, and I'm challenged, do have that Bible conviction, but let's have grace with one another as we're operating. In fact, if you have different uh, ways to look at things politically, maybe total polar opposites, maybe someone in your family, I would challenge you to graciously have a meal with them, hear their heart, share your heart, and then agree to disagree in a loving way, but stand firm on your biblical convictions, amen? So again, there's, we actually have uh, 
some information when it comes to the abortion initiative to inform you. And I challenge you, read that, be prepared, be biblical, and please vote. Please vote. Tap your neighbor, just say, please vote. Please vote. Do it. Do it now. Do it now. <laughs> we, we literally are. We're, our country's at a, a crossroads. And I would say this. Secondly, here, when it comes to being prayerful and biblical, I was with some pastors in Atlanta um, several months ago as we were praying for our nation. And what we came to conclusion of is we're gonna create spaces all over the nation where instead of uh, biting our fingernails and like looking at you know your favorite TV, I don't know what you, what, what you watch to see like what's going on, we're gonna open up the church so we can actually come and pray and worship and, and worship the King of Kings that no matter who ends up winning, he is still on the throne and he'll still use that for his glory. So I would encourage you, please come on out. It's gonna be amazing. The verse that keeps on coming back to me is in, uh, I think it's in 2 Chronicles. Help me out, cap 16, 9, if my people who are called by my name, what's it? 714, thank you. 2 Chronicles 714, if my people, if you're a Christian, if my people who are called by his name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from our wicked ways, he will heal, he will hear from heaven, he will forgive our sin, and listen to this now, he will heal our land. So to me, I'm like, dude, let's go. Like, let's get active. Uh, let's get before the Lord. Let's intercede and see what God wants to do. Amen? Okay, hallelujah night. Who's going? Raise your hand. Hallelujah night. Let's go. I want to explain this. So uh, 25 years ago in Fort Lauderdale, I was serving in youth ministry. My wife was also serving in youth, youth ministry. She wasn't my wife at the time. And we got challenged to come out to serve. They put us as security that night. And we, there were thousands of kids and parents that came in non-evil costumes. And we had Bible stories all over the campus and food and games as an alternative to Halloween, not partnering with evil, but leveraging the actual uh, opportunity to invite our neighbors to come and listen to Bible stories on who Jesus is. And we saw all kinds of families and lives change for the glory of God. So I wanted to be clear, that's what we're doing. And by the way, that was the first night I hung out with Denise Hackamer. And every night, every day since then we hung out and 25 years later, hey, we're still married. So what am I trying to say? Come on out and serve. You might find your boo at hallelujah night. Could happen. Just saying, just saying, just saying. Last thing I'll say is this. So we're giving these out like hotcakes and we're giving you a challenge. And here's the reason. Years ago when our twins were little, we committed to reading this before they went to bed every night. One twin read uh, the short passage right from the Bible on even days, and the other twin read it on the odd days. I won't tell you what twin read one, which one. At the end of the section, there's a summary statement. We had over 30 people live with us as we were raising the kids. They would read the summary statement. We'd pray for our kids, we would just prophesy over them, and then we'd, we'd, we'd send them to bed. And so that's the challenge. Now the kids are 22, and I'm celebrating, man, their love for God, their love for people, their diligence. A lot of it is attributed to daily intake of God's word, teaching them. So that's my challenge to you. Um, both my boys are happily married, by the way. We just married our other one off a couple weeks ago. Godly women. God's word works, man. So that's the challenge. That's our goal. Our whole goal of today, Orange Sunday, is for you to get with your kids in the Bible every night. Give them a chance. There's a lot of things you can't control in this life, parents. You can control this choice to train them in the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Okay. I'm ready. Someone say, I'm ready. 
ready for the word, ready for the word. Let's pray, let's launch in. God, what a privilege and honor for us, your family, to be together as we consider your word, as we worship you. We want to continue to worship you and study in your word. And I pray, as always, you would get me out of the equation. You would send the Holy Spirit to be our teacher. You would speak to souls through this microphone, online, in the auditorium. As we open your scriptures, let your spirit speak. I pray we'd all grow, we'd be challenged, we'd be edified, we'd walk away different, having met with the very creator of the universe. We wanna know you deeper and better today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, have you ever made a promise that you haven't kept? Anybody ever made a promise that you haven't kept? You, you made the promise, you did the pinky swear, you know, you swear on my mama, you know, and, and uh, you were solid. You were gonna absolutely get it done and then in your human weakness, you got busy or, you know, you got distracted and for whatever reason, you weren't able to make good on that promise. Uh, I've, I've had several of those tragically over my life that I cringe about sometimes. And, you know, with your good intentions, you know, or maybe you uh, ordered a product online and they promised to deliver it to your house and that thing got stuck on a ship coming from China and it just never came, came to your house. The product never arrived. This happened to me recently. I ordered some dog food for my buddy Ding. That's my little Italian greyhound. And dude, I was like, the homie's gonna be out of food any minute. And it didn't, it, it was like 10 days late that it came. We had to head over to Costco so he wouldn't die. We got like some others. He actually likes that better now. He's getting spoiled. And uh, <laughs> they promised that the product would be there. And for whatever reason, actually, I know the reason. I put in the wrong address, by the way. <laughs> so, so full confession, pastor confession getting mad at, the, at them, and they, they didn't deliver on their promise. Well, that was your, your problem, buddy. You're like, what are you talking about promises? Well, today's text in our, in our daily reading and in September 14 in your Orange Bible, we're gonna talk about the promise of the Father. And don't you love it that God is always faithful with his promises? Anybody grateful? Like, just think about some of the promises. Man, he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He's always gonna provide. He's always right on time. You might not think about that he's on time, but he's always on time. Sorry. Dang. Yeah, you, you're ready, huh? I love his promises. And the greatest promise is what we will look at, and it's not a product, but it's a person of the Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit who Jesus said will come when I bounce. And so you know the story. Jesus goes to the cross for you and I. He's brutally beat. He's crucified on the cross for the sin of mankind. They bury him. Three days later, he raises from the grave. Now, what does he say? Now I'm gonna send the Holy Spirit to fill you. And he is gonna live his life through you. In fact, Jesus actually said, to his disciples before he left, he said, it's actually to your advantage that I go away because when I go away, I'm gonna send the Holy Spirit. And this is the key to Christianity. So many of us today, we're trying to white knuckle our way through life and just be a good Christian. I'm trying to be loving. I'm trying to be joyful, especially to that person that works right next to me. I'm really trying but then you fly off the handle. Well, here, here's, I got good news for you. God, in his promise, is sending the Holy Spirit, and he, if we'll get out of the way, will live his life through us. And now, all of a sudden, someone is flowing through you and loving unconditionally, and those people aren't real loving. They're not real easy to love, but God, because of this great promise, and I'll show it to you. I'm gonna start, actually, in Acts chapter 1. It was fascinating when Jesus was crucified, he, he was resurrected. Did you know he came back to the planet before he went back to heaven? He actually came back and lived with his disciples for like 40 days. That blows my mind. How about that? One of your friends is just dead and all of a sudden, 
raises from the dead three days later. And he's like, yo, can I just come over and hang out? Let's get some Chipotle. And they, they, they just start hanging out and eating. And, and in verse four of Acts 1, after the resurrection, as he's with them, it says, when he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift. Here it is. He what? He promised, as I told you before. John baptized, remember Johnny the baptizer? That guy was wild. John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you will be what? You'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You'll be immersed. God's Spirit will come and fill you. In John 14, verse 16, this is when we get into our text. Jesus, speaking to his disciples, he says, I will ask the Father. He'll give you another advocate. That Greek word is parakletes, which literally means one who's who's called to come alongside to help. How awesome is that? I will give you an advocate who will never leave you. There's a promise. He, and I want you to tune in right here. If you're new to God, you're new to the Holy Spirit, listen, he's sending not a product, but a person. Look at verse 17. He, everybody say he. He is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not a mist, a force. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the triune Godhead. He, he is fully God. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. By the way, pause real quick. Don't you love that the Holy Spirit can guide you into truth in a world right now that's chaotic, that's trying to, like, through your social media feed, get you all distracted? You can ask the Holy Spirit. He'll get you right back into truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him, which is so interesting. I was thinking about that. This is a good word for us Christians. When you come to Christ and God by his grace fills you with him, and now the fruit of that, which we'll get into, peace, patience, kindness, and you're wanting to share Christ with your non-believing friends, here's something to keep in mind. They can't receive the Holy Spirit. They don't know him. And this is key because sometimes we get mad or frustrated with non-believers or we get even worse, judgmental. But let me just say this. here's Here's the reason why. They've never come to a surrender to be filled with the Holy Spirit so they can't speak the same language. It's like you're speaking in a foreign language. You ever been on a, like on a mission trip or you ever been to a foreign country and they don't know your language? You know, you know, let's just use English and Spanish. And you're speaking English to them, but they only know Spanish. And what do you do? You like try to use hand signals and then you raise your voice, right? No, you, where, I need to get that. And they're like, I think sometimes us as Christians, we're raising our voice to people that don't just simply don't have the Holy Spirit and we're, we're yelling and they're like, dude, I just don't know. These are good people. They're just disconnected from the presence of God. So any event, they don't know him. But then he goes on, but you know him because he lives with you. So before we come to Christ, it's, you know, that time where God's spirit's knocking on your heart going, hey man, I got something better for you. That Greek word's para. He's, he's he's, He's with you and later he will be what? In you. This is powerful thought. And we have to understand this. It's, it's God's convicting you, growing you. He's, he's, he's drawing you. That's his spirit. And now at conversion, when I finally surrender God's presence, he literally comes and lives his life through you. He's the paracletes, the one who's called alongside to help. What are some of the results of this promise? I'm glad you asked. Number one, if you're a note taker, you can jot it down. Number one, power. Everybody say power. In fact, where are my kids at? I need a flex. Where are my kids? Come on, like, yeah, front row, twin. No, okay. Where are my kids at? Yeah. By the way, th- how cool is it? Let's, let's clap for the kids real quick. Man, I love y'all kids. Let's go. Even more so, let's clap for the love kids servants, man. Y'all are amazing people. By the end of this encounter, you'll be glad that the kids, no, I would just say, no, it's cool that, 
I always wanted a church where the kids are learning in their environment, having a good time. So number one, power. Luke 24, 49, jot it down. Here's what the Bible says. And now I will send the Holy Spirit just as my father, what? Promise. There's the promise. But stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with what? With power. With power from heaven. The Greek word is dunamis. It looks like dynamis, but it's really dunamis. It's where we get our, our English word dynamite. So literally, if you're in here right now and you're kind of limping through life, what you really need is access to the power and presence of God, the dunamis power of God. And, and that is through the Holy Spirit. It's so beautiful when you think about it. It's, it's not just like this dynamite. You never walk into a room and you could just sense something's different in the room. It's God's presence. It's God's Holy Spirit living his life through someone in that environment. It's so wild how that happens. This, this dynamite power. Acts 1.8 is when Jesus was connecting with his disciples and he was telling them before they even go anywhere, make sure they wait and they are filled with God's presence, his power before they are sent out. In Acts 1.8, one of my favorite verses, look at what it says, but you shall receive what? You will receive power, there it is, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, the Greek word is epi, when he comes upon you, takes you over, and you'll be my witnesses. Then you'll be my witnesses. Do you see the order? So we're filled with his power, his presence, and then we are his witnesses telling people about me everywhere. In Jerusalem, and I would say your home throughout Judea, maybe the, the city, the area, Samaria, and then to the ends of the earth. What I've found for me many times, the, the, the problem when I am lacking power is I'm filled with more Todd than I am God. The picture, I, I wish I had a, a glass of water. It's like, it's like, dude, many times if I'm the glass, I gotta dump myself out before I actually can be filled with God's power. It happens for me every day. And Paul the Apostle wrote in Ephesians 5.18, look at what it says, and, and Pastor Cap started our encounter with it. I love how we sync up. This is what Paul said. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. By the way, any of us that have struggled with alcohol in the past, isn't that such a true statement, dude? Just you, you think that you're gonna drink and it's gonna take away your pain, which it might just briefly, but then the next day, the pain comes back in the form of a headache, and we're going to try to find peace in spirits, the, these liquor spirits, but then what does Paul say? Instead, be filled, and that word is pleru, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And that, that means to be filled to the brim over and over. It literally means when you translate it, be ye being filled. So what is it, man? The Holy Spirit is like knocking on your heart at salvation. He comes in and lives with you. He's upon you for power. And then it's like this daily thing. My, my daily prayer, you guys know my daily prayer. Before I even put my feet, I like, I got this bed that's kind of high and I kind of do one of these, you know, one of these numbers and my feet are like dangling a little bit, you know, and I'm like, God, kill me, fill me and send me. Actually, one of my friends said, you need to change the send to spill. So it's kill me, fill me and spill me. I, oh, I like that. What is it doing? It's, it's this idea of, get Todd out of the equation, man. Because when it's Todd and God, it's com convoluted and it doesn't really come out right. But when it's, boom, kill me, fill me, this player rue being filled every day and then spill me into the lives of other people. What is it? This is the basis of Christianity, man. It's God, the Holy Spirit, living his life through you. Don't you love it? That's why it's love church. Love God supremely so that what? He can just love through you supernaturally. And it's this beautiful flow that happens. It's kind of like um, gassing up at the gas station or where my EV folks, anybody got the electric vehicles? Man, I, I, that's a perfect illustration. You got the power source on your home charger. You connect it to the car. You're like, brrr, it's all of a sudden, dude, now I'm flowing. That's, so I'm gonna say power. power. That's, that's power. So this promise, he would send the Holy Spirit to live 
in us and to live through us for power, power that we don't have. Number two, peace. Everybody say peace. Verse 26, but when the Father sends the advocate, the paracletos, as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I've told you. Before I get to the peace verse in 27, I gotta say this. Yesterday, or excuse me, last week, I had the privilege of serving in Love Kids upstairs. And there was a, we were actually talking about God, the Holy Spirit, um, the leaders doing a great job. And one of the questions was, who, who is... Who is God the Holy Spirit? And this kid, I, I think he was there for the first or second time. I think he was there third or fourth grade. He said, oh, he's, he's God and he helps me do things that I can't do on my own. And then he said, and, and he gives me understanding into the Bible, which I can't understand sometimes. I was like, eh. <laughs> I was like, bro, you got, you free next week? You like, you want to come? Come and teach, like, okay, we can all go home now, right? Just love that, man. Obviously, he's been trained properly by his parents in the home and connected in the word. 27, this is what I wanted to get to, man, it, this peace. Look at this. This is powerful text. If you're reading through the word with us, man, this is so big. When you come to places like this in the Bible, just pause and pray. Listen to what it says. This is Jesus talking. I'm leaving you with a gift, it's like, man, I'm, I'm about to head out. You know, uh, this is what I'm going to give you. Peace of mind and heart. Anybody just, you just need peace right now you, in, a, in a chaotic and divisive and, and wild world. I don't know about you, but I need peace, man. That's one of the biggest things I need in this season. He says, I'm going to leave you with the gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift that the world cannot give. Man, no candidate, no issue, no, like there's no little S saviors. There's one savior and he's the only one that can give deep, eternal peace. He, he's, he said, man, I, I'm not giving a possession when I go. It's like his last will and testament. He's like, I'm not giving any possessions. I'm giving peace. And so he finishes up telling his disciples, so don't be troubled or afraid. It was tragic. I was just studying on the lack of peace in our culture. And one article I read said that one in three um, adults in the U.S. Uh, have a sleep deprivation problem. And it was going into it how so many are caught up on their phones and social media and computer and TVs that all this information that we were not like made to, absolute, to be able to uh, connect in our brains. It's overloading us. So when so many of us are, are, are trying to get to sleep, there's too much going on in our mind and we can't sleep. And next thing you know, we're, we're up all night and there's like two hours of sleep that you, that you have. And then you get to the next day and then it stacks on. And I was reading about this and I, I just wanted to stop and just pray. If anyone's dealing with that right now, I just wanted to pray and prophesy, God, that you would just change that today and that p the peace would cover their mind and there would be sweet sleep and rest. Deep peace. It broke my heart. I, I, was, I, I talked to another guy recently. He said, yeah, man, I'm, I'm sleeping three hours a night. And my heart broke and I'm like, oh my goodness. Jesus wants to give peace. It's a deep, it's not temporary, temporary peace. It's eternal peace. It's not based on circumstance. It's not superficial. It's a supernatural peace that he gives. And I, I want to give you these two scriptures that are two of my favorites when it comes to peace. Write it down if you could. You can check it out later. Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. Man, some of you guys know this. Some of you guys need to put it, like write a little sticky note, put it on your mirror, you know, like right now, if you're working through a season, going through some lack of peace. Here's, here's what it says. This is Paul. This is God through Paul writing to the church in Philippi. He says, don't worry about anything. How many of us are worrying about a million things right now, right? This is so good. He says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and then thank him for all he has done. I love an attitude of gratitude. Then, verse seven says, then you will experience God's what? His peace. 
his shalom, which exceeds anything we can understand. His what? His peace. What will it do? It will guard your heart. Everybody put your hand over your heart. He will, his peace will guard your heart and then now on your head and your mind as you live in Christ Jesus, man. I love that. It's his peace. It, it's supernatural. It's, it doesn't, it's not connected to the world or how things are going. No, it's a deep supernatural peace that he's gonna bring by the Holy Spirit. And then Isaiah 26, three, which is one of my wife's favorite verses, jot it down. The Bible says this, you will keep in perfect, here it is, peace, all who trust in you. And then watch this, all whose thoughts are what? Fixed on you. Listen, you are a free moral agent. You are a human being. One of the greatest gifts that God's given you and I is choice. And we have the choice on what we are fixing our minds on every single day. What we're tuning into, what we're reading, who we're hanging out with, we have control over that. And he says, man, if you want peace, keep your thoughts fixed on God. Fasten to God. And that's gonna go into... Our last one here, look at, look at uh, number three, just jot it down. So, so this promise of the Father, Holy Spirit, power, peace, and then finally three, produce. I couldn't stop in John 14. I, I needed to go into John 15. You guys ready? John 15, verse four, here it is. Read it with me. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. I think sometimes, again, we, we, we make Christianity so complicated, really, it's, he's saying, just stay connected to me. Remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce, there it is, fruit if it's severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. What is Jesus doing? He's speaking to, he's going into parable mode with his followers and he's using a real life thing that's going on in an agrarian society. I'm not a, where are my gardeners at, man? I'm not, okay, there you go. Come on, garden to the glory of God over there. It's like, I, and he's like, he's like, yo, this, this vine is the source of power, the source of peace, and you're the branches, and all you have to do is, is stay connected. And then in verse five, he says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. You disciples, you're the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce what, guys? Much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nada. That's Espanol right there. You can do nada. And I just love this, this picture that he gives. It really is about staying connected. And I was, it's funny because I, I was like, well, how can I do a different illustration? And so I thought this might work. Cap, can you just help me, please, real quick? Just grab the bottom of that hose and, yeah, there you go. Okay, just, just hold it for a second, okay? You're a good man. So I, I just thought of, like, you know, this, this hose as kind of like the father, right? And basically what he's saying, if you want to see fruit flow out of your life, like, you're the hose, okay, Cap? You, you're the hose, all right, you're the hose, dude. I'm the father, okay? I'm the, I'm the faucet. And so you're, you're really, there's not a lot of pressure on you. <laughs> faucet father, I like that, all right. Hose him, okay, good. Or her, I guess, okay. And the source of life, the vine, is kind of like this faucet. And really, you're only, you're, you, out of your free will, is like, dude, I just, got, I just need to stay connected. Or I gotta get connected. And it's funny because I was thinking, how many of us get distracted and busy in life and we start in a good rhythm in God's word with God's people, worshiping, praying, like just staying connected and just, you're not a bad person, but you just got distracted. The distraction led to disconnect. And then you're looking at the, the end of the hose and it used to flow out of there. There used to be fruit of the spirit. There, you're like, why am I so on edge lately? Could it be of the disconnect? And so there's no shame, no blame, but maybe one of the practical things that you can learn today is just, just go get connected again. Yeah. Just, just open the Bible again. Yeah. Just, just show back up to your group again. Yeah. 
We've said from this church, this church should never get bigger than four to 14. One thing I love about my Friday a.m., 6 a.m. group, I'm gonna come, we're gonna get a round table and talk about God's word, talk about our life. It's, 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 it's about being connected. And so what happens, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, you, you might need to, you. you're the father and the hose today, all right. Let's give it up for Cap Chatfield. So, isn't that great? Like, so, so now from heaven, what ends up happening is, is fruit starts flowing through my life. And Paul writes about this fruit in Galatians. He talks about the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. And I thought, okay, what, if there are kids in here that are learning this, what are some of the fruits of the Spirit that maybe if you're a kid in here and you can answer this question, I actually literally brought fruit for you, believe it or not. Anybody, anybody? Okay, right, go ahead. No, 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 just, just one, just one, just one. <laughs> What's the first one? Oh, I love that. Okay, yeah, Cap, can you please? Here, listen to this. I, and I like this. The fruit of the Spirit is, starts with what? Love. love. And I, here's what I believe. I believe that that's the number one fruit that flows from God's Spirit. It's love, but then it takes different forms, and that's the rest of what he's talking about. So it's love. Everybody say love. love. Man, think about that. that. When you show up to work, right, or you show up to Hallelujah Night today, and people come on this campus, and all of a sudden, you're connected to the Holy Spirit, his love is flowing and they feel warm and embraced in a dark and gnarly world, something changes. So it's love. What, what's, what's, what's another one? Anybody else? Okay, go ahead. Oh, I love that. Someone say joy. I think, I'm, can I just chuck it to you? Can you catch this? Let's see. I'm lefty right here. Oh my goodness. That was weak. My bad, dude. Love, joy. Give me another one. All the way in the back. I like that. Gentleness. Man, I forgot about that one. I must have been disconnected, man. <laughs> yeah, all the way in the back. Oh, he's wearing an Illinois sweatshirt, so let's give it to someone else, maybe. <laughs> I love it. Love, joy, gentleness. How many just appreciate that? And kids, by the way, what could that look like at home? When your brother is annoying you later tonight, you can go, you know what, God? I just want to get connected to you again. Because right now I want to hit him in the face, but you're, you call me and you're going to give me power and peace to be able to embrace him and forgive him instead of fight him. That's how, the, that's, that's how important it is to stay connected to the vine. We'll produce much fruit. I love it. So we got, we got love, joy. What are some other ones? Go ahead, right here. Yeah. Peace. Come on. Peace. Another one. Give me another one. Let me see here. What do you got? Oh, pay, oh my goodness. She just say patience. Now, let me ask you, how can that actually practically work out? Here, here's some fruit of the spirit right there. How about this, patience? When you're in your home and your parents had a bad day, instead of judging them, maybe you pray for them. Because what happened is they're not bad people, but they got disconnected from the source, and now you tap into God's power and his patience. Good, maybe one or two more left. Let's get to this side over there. Yeah, go ahead, bro, right there. Faithful, oh my, dude. There you go, right here. Thanks, bro, what's your name, dude? Will, everybody say, what's up, Will? So Will, that's the beauty of what can happen. So we don't have to strive in Christianity. All we do, what do we do? We stay connected. We stay connected, and now God's faithfulness will flow through you. And when it's, it gets hard, gets tough, you can stay faithful to God throughout your life, man. It's powerful. The last thing I'll, I'll say is this, to carry this through. That's good. I know. Thank you, guys, by the way. Your participation is so good. All right, one last one. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, dude. Hold on, give, give him the whole darn thing real quick. <laughs> Bro, how about this? What's your name, dude? Ezra? 
Come on, man. Let's give it up for Ezra right there. Thanks, brother. I'll tell you what, man. As humans, whoo, self-control. Imagine if throughout this election, if the, if the church can stay connected and when we want to start being divisive and calling people names like third graders, what if we stayed connected and had self-control over our tongue and actually the fruit of the Spirit was humility because of the self-control? Powerful. Last thing I would give you is form. I was thinking about this when, when I see the fruit of the Spirit start dissipating in my life. It's disconnection. And here's what I also thought. It's when I'm lazy or busy or whatever. But also, you know what ends up happening in my life at times? I fall into sin and I do something that's not God's best. And what does it do? It kinks the hose. And I'm wondering why, what happened with the flow? It's because I made a choice to go outside of God's best. And here's what I want to tell someone. You're in here today and you used to flow with God's spirit and you're starting to shrivel up. And here's, here's what I would just say. No shame, no blame, because some people want to feel so shameful that they never want to come back to God. Here's what it is. You know what repentance does? Just, just being honest with God, that was dumb. That was outside of your best, and I'm really, I'm really sorry for it. Will you forgive me? Guess what? You know what forgiveness does? It returns the flow. And now all of a sudden, you get reconnected, and it flows again to the glory of God. And that's one of the closing verses that I had here. And John 15, so good. John 15, 11, I love this. Here's what he says. I've told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy, what will it do, church? It will overflow out of you. His power, peace, it will produce the flow. Amen? Amen. God, thank you for this word. I love it. So good that you've given us this challenge. And I pray that we would stay connected to you in your word. We would not overcomplicate it. You're so gracious. You want to speak if we'll simply open our ears. So those of us that have been disconnected, would you reconnect us here today? Those of us that have kinks in the hose, God, we pray that that would be released through repentance and the flow would occur again. Love and joy and peace, patience and kindness, goodness faithfulness, gentleness. Boy, I need a double portion of that, God. Self-control, which we all need. We know we can't do it in and of ourselves and our own strength. We are in, it's impossible. It literally is. So would you just get us out of the way again? Just fill us afresh. Even today, I pray on this campus and all throughout all the amazing churches and throughout all the phenomenal Christians this week, we pray that your spirit would flow for your glory and we'd be able to be on mission helping many people in Jesus' name. Before I